Okay, I have an idea for the second one. I'm hopefully I'll make it um, shorter. Yep, I changed glasses. <laughs> I like these ones better. Um, so what I want to do is I want to start. I want to start really, really at the essence, at the essential um, understanding of of, uh, of scientific creation of evolution. In the in the conceptual way of how to how to understand it, uh, in a conceptual way, uh, people have a lot of ideas and they're simple notions. But if we listen to how we explain things, we will you will notice that we uh, construct a certain logic sometimes very rigidly, and then when we have to answer ourselves a question that is presented to us later by ourselves or by others, uh, we, we uh, project from the, the, the strength of those affirmations and uh, of, uh, the affirmation of those beliefs. And often we don't have, really have a more uh, 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 accurate, uh, softer, more um, humble and realistic notion towards something that is scientific that would be required to more accurately respond to that question. So I'm going to give an example of what I mean by that. Um, you know, people, it's, it's funny because <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, this sexual, this uh, homosexual uh, movement in Western society has created a lot of affirm uh, statements from people, you know, like to the point where they They'll say things that you can tell they believe that it's just uh, an option, you know. Well, you're straight or heterosexual or gay, you know. It's just um, one of the many choices that life gives you or something like this. Meaning uh, the body or creation, evolution or science, you know. They don't realize that they're um, giving uh, a scientific substance to their statements when they're saying that. Uh, they just say it very, very casually. Um, uh, okay, so to understand um, the the notion of uh, binary sexuality, right off the bat, people hear that, and and we and I know people in general think, oh well, sexuality can happen any number of ways, right? <laughs> um, what I want to explain is how. Im embedded in the will of evolution, um, male-female binary um, functioning of sexuality is. I mean, you could you could just look around you and and see it prevalent in every in so many forms of life, and there are very few forms of life and exceptional, and there or they're a very uh, primitive, evolutionarily speaking, form. Now. But that alone isn't enough. I mean, to really get the concept, think about, for example, when we talk about ingesting nourishment and all living forms, right? Ingest nourishment. Uh, but living beings um, develop, uh, create stomachs, right? And so they eat through the mouth and um, they, the food gets digested in their stomach. Uh, conscious living animals and human beings, right? And so we say nourishment in order to grow and we take it for granted well enough that it involves eating uh, food and digesting it and then pooping it out, right? Or, for example, if you talk about the, the um, logic of breathing, needing oxygen, we say all living forms, not just animals and humans, but plants, they need oxygen. Now, living conscious beings, animals and human beings, develop, all of us develop lungs. So when you think of it this way, and you think about, immediately think about the lungs as the ruling and only way in which you can take in air, dolphins have lungs, you know, um, all conscious living intelligence has lungs or has stomachs. Now think about uh, the necessity of all life 
forms, plants, animals, human beings, to procreate, to, to proliferate. That's what evolution does. It doesn't make one and then decides, should I multiply these? No, it makes, it starts off collectively in the, in the plural sense. When evolution, creation happens, it, it, it appears simultaneously as collectives. Um, and so pro, its propagation is as is part of it. It's not a detached function like, well, now we need sexuality and let's see how many different ways of procreating we have. No, it comes all with a package. It's about expanding and proliferating and the, the, uh, the complementing genders of sexuality, binary they call it, right? Uh, or something like that. I've been listening, I've been hearing them call, be called binary to gender sexuality is as part of that propagating as it is to have lungs or to have stomachs. That's just the way evolution nature does it. Uh, for something that is really wonderful to maybe we should be more interested in uh, how that happens, why that is, is it's about fusion and uh, how that, what requirements that fusion has. It's really interesting and we really we polemicize and argue uh, human intelligence is so we think that we can decree uh, our uh, choices upon things that as we understand them, as we go along and we start discovering immediately we want to own it and say, well, you know, it could be this way, it could be that way. Why don't we try this? Why don't we try that? And some things are so much bigger than that. Um, evol creation, evolutionary creation is so much infinitely enormous. Uh, it is, uh, we should be more humble and, and really be more interested in what we discover to continue learning and seeing more into it and get lost. Go in there and start this seeing it because it's an expanding world. Instead we want to, oh we think we got to figure it out and immediately we want to start experimenting and changing surgically people's gender and we still don't even understand the enormous wonder of the fusion how fusion is required by sexuality and, um, you know, even the forms of our genitals. Um, why is it necessary to go inside the other and the other one to receive within her? You know, these are really, really, there's a reason for all of these forms and we really don't care to learn about it. It seems that we're happy arriving at a certain level and then we just want to take it over and, and redesign in reality. It's fascinating. We, we just started scratching the surface. And so this is how, how um, I don't uh, something better than embedded. This is how much part of pro, uh, proliferation of life to genders is. It's not something that you can, oh, well, you know, homosexuality is just, it can't be, no, homosexuality is something that happens to sexuality with two genders which is something saying, it's saying something completely different. You, it's like saying, well, um, you know, well, I'm not saying that it, it always leads to short circuit because we're not talking about an electrical system in somebody's house, but it's as clear in, in this regard as saying you have an ACDC system in your house and well, you conceivably you could, you know, switch the cable and put it, put, put it in the other one and you get a short circuit. Well, in the case of life, human, uh, conscious human uh, living forms, it's not a short circuit. Something else, very, very complex and expansive uh, starts happening. The dynamics start occurring that don't normally happen with sexuality when you do that, but you can do it and you will live a whole bunch, a host, a whole host of things that have to do with forces and, and, and scientific sectors of sexuality will be lived through the homosexual experience. So it's not a short circuit. Um, and obviously we make it work. <laughs> People are born and die having been only with the same uh, gender. So it, it is not short circuit. It's something we actually learn to overcome some of these dynamics that don't quite that were kind of unexpected and so that's that would open a whole subject but I'm just going to leave it at this uh, because what I want to uh, what I want to leave us with now is just to really see 
how enormously wonderful creation is and there is a, a will that sends forth life forms through evolutions and this is not being atheistic and not believing in god god is within the universe uh and we may be very small a creation of god but still uh um you know our creators are living breathing beings <laughs> Uh, maybe they're not breathing when maybe they they take in oxygen through their fingers who knows but what I'm saying is we're all part of the universe and so it is not denying of creators or God uh, to um, you know to understand real evolutionary forces uh, that govern at least our world uh, and probably every other world that has you know, in other words, if it happens in one place, it's probably uh, the way the universe does it. It's not something that, oh, it only happened here. <laughs> you know, it's just, this is what happens in the universe. This is, and there are many more forms and variations, of course, but the, el the, the force, the great forces that rule the eternal uh, forms of living beings are, 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 are as big as the universe. It's not uh, a choice on a menu. Like, oh, you know, it could be heterosexual, it could be, you know, straight. No, it's not. <laughs> you have to understand that homosexuality is something that you could sort of, you have to make happen to human sexuality. You have to consciously say, well, we already know that the standard, it's, you know, um, the, the two genders, male and female, appear with the sexuality of all living forms even plants and so it is not um something even that you can ponder and look upon it's just the environment the way you know no different <laughs> wherever you go in the universe you will find some this probably an expression of of uh of, of sexualities that complement male and female and so when you look at it this way you understand that homosexuality is really small contained within it's something that you could do you could be mischievous and to rewire and see what happens if i do that <laughs> well you know you, dolphins apparently they say they do it and you see expressions of homosexuality you know animals and we certainly have been with it for all our history and so it opens a whole understanding a huge understanding of, of, of explanations and sciences and different sciences and what have you but the starting point is something that happens that can be done or happens or uh, can occur <laughs> uh, given uh, the the sexual the, 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 the sexuality of, of mankind of humankind or of animals because it is two genders you could there's nothing stopping you from saying well you know use all have all those forces that motivate the complementation applied at the same gender let's see what happens well homosexuality is what happens and we have very poor understanding of it we we have a problem with its instability and it is unstable it, it immediately oh i know why i explained all that because there is a sense, because we don't have such a large view on the on the eternalness of sexuality and its its configuration of how it is, you know, stomach, lungs, two genders. <laughs> um, we we feel that okay, wait, I'm feeling, I'm going to pause it because I had the idea. All right, yeah, yeah, uh, I know what I wanted to touch on in this video. It is the aversion, the aversion. The discomfort, the all the chaotic, um, the fear, the fascination, the disgust, rejection, the um, the occurrence, the, the attraction, the wanting it, the, the the all the because they're they're all ruled by instability. Um, even even people that are born really. Um, it and needing it and only paying attention to the same gender let's say and so it developed very strongly in them early on as, as babies 
um, also experience in their first um, counting. Now, some people have said it is uh, the fear religion has indoctrinated people in. No, homophobia is, is something that results naturally because basically we're, it's, uh, I, I know what I want to explain. It's, it's a little difficult to explain, but it is not that we need, we, sh, we, we don't have any need to explain how sexuality works. We don't have a need to uh, explain how sexuality works so that the aversion, rejection, fear, secrecy, or what have you, of homosexuality makes sense. Because it's almost like the living form is not really prepared for it, for somebody, something consciously deciding to go about it differently. And so homophobia is not a directly occurring mechanism. It's not like nature said, okay, I've got to have something to make sure that we continue, you know, the track continues straight with two rails, one on each side. It, um, because everything is conducive along the design of sexuality, when you switch the cables around, there's nothing in place to uh, continue making sense biologically in, in the greater design concept of of a life of the life form of the sexuality of the life form and so it it's more like it produces an uncharted area or uh confusion uh, there's nothing really there and so it's very hard to explain the aversion or the fear or the anger or the rejection or and and it's also very hard to explain when it becomes more attractive than what nature would result like, you know, because typically there is sort of a, an average, there would be an average um, behavior that we can sort of explain. Typically, little boys, they're 12, 13, many, many have, you know, they, they start seeing that their body's changing and they try something. They, they will either do something with their little buddy. It's just part of how, um, you know, we discover our emotions. And it is typical that, you know, they felt uncomfortable or they, they don't want to talk about it. Um, or they did it for a little while and then they couldn't continue being friends. Um, this is as far as the average overall that you could say a guy might relate to and we're not talking about the cases in which homosexuality develops a desire or a stronger intent but how you know many guys might relate to that having not talk about it they don't tell him no <laughs> nobody talked about it ever again <laughs> The reason it is that way is because naturally it's it's you know what explains what explains uh the dynamics that occur from homosexuality from the homosexual experience is basically um you can you can understand it when you realize that you put something where it wasn't meant to flow and so um you have to, we basically have got to lead it if we want to keep it, install it. Every single time we have to give it a, a logic, an explanation, uh, uh, something that makes it possible. Um, because it's it's perpetually unstable. It's, it's, it's really fascinating um, to actually understand why the feelings that occur from especially the ones that are about rejection and uh because it's always you know another typical thing is i've seen this growing up straight guys guys that you know regular guys not guys that were looking for homosexuality when they were young 
um, still they were put before a situation that was uh, a homosexual situation with maybe some, some street kids or some, some really gay guy or what have you that came into the group and was were all hanging around. And you would see that they're, you know, they're like, no, that's weird, that's uncomfortable. So that's kind of like a natural reaction. Uh, and at the same time, simultaneously, he kind of wants to keep going back and looking at it or provoking, saying, have something to say, and then it gets, to, it needs to get defined, it becomes an adamant um, rejection, an offense, it needs to become offended so that the rejection and the insult becomes, makes sense. Or they're okay with it, they're open-minded, relaxed, and, and so they can keep that curiosity or that fascination or that willingness to, you know, be close and involved with that person at, as a friend or as a, at a personal level. But it always has both. And, and um, that's what's really fascinating about homosexuality is that when you invert the, the, the order of of, of the natural design, you get a whole bunch of um, a, a simultaneous duality of dynamics that don't normally occur and that live in this spontaneous contradiction uh, in, a, in a very in, unstable uh, environment. And so um, from here, humanity has done uh has handled it differently because there there is nothing that will take you with the river in other words that will allow for it to build naturally how uh, and, and lead to how all societies have pretty much been built the same way there is nothing you we you have to always deal with it and so it's been dealt with in different ways it's been dealt with uh, rejectingly denying it punishing it or or acknowledging in some way that there's yes there is some kind of also at the same time something that doesn't make sense an attraction a fascination a curiosity uh, a daringness that you know it's it's so common to to know men men who are you know men men what have you uh when you will have something secret and, and then they, well, why does that happen? Why do they have that secret experience and then they don't tell their friends? No matter how open-minded, how bisexually open-minded a guy is, once he has a girlfriend uh, and he has, he runs around with a guy, maybe everybody knew he was even gay before. And still when he's come back to his center and maybe he's had a kid and he got married and he, he was unloyal maybe he's polyamorous and he has a girlfriend maybe he might tell a few of his friends but if it's a gig if it's a guy it has that that tendency to always seek um to be hidden it's 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 this instability it's this instability characterizes the inversion of of the flow and uh that understanding that in the scientific sense is kind of starts explaining a whole lot of different ways that have different things that have happened in society, different, uh, resulting in different, different things, even, even our, you know, America, you know, English, Latin, Western, whatever have you, movement of homosexuality in the West, most recent, uh, development, um, it also has a, a, a a sort of a stiffness and instability, something that it, it really tries too hard to make it work. So when do you try too hard to make something work? And you shut people up from having any dissent and you kind of become, it's ironic, it's become the other way around. You know, they make fun of the, the gay Nazism, right? Well, when something is unstable and you get angry and you want to establish it, it's almost like a, a, bo a boat that won't stop rocking. And so we get frustrated because we want to make that boat sail and it won't stop rocking. So we, we start getting a little crazy about how we want to see it take form in society. Um, 
anyways, so I'm going to just go leave it at this. I'm going to leave it at this point. Um, and maybe on the next one, I'm going to talk a little bit about what happened in the 70s, what happened in Christopher Street Stonewall, and the evolution of, of the scientific medical caliber of understanding of homosexuality that was starting to grow with the, the appearance of psychology as a as a subject at this turn of last century right more or less and how we started talking about how personality develops according to how we you know how we were treated as children and then all of a sudden in the 50s they started saying oh maybe homosexuality and they started actually discovering uh, a lot of uh, common denominators, guys that were really overtly and insisting of always and always seeking homosexuality, not the rare caught experiences of here and there, no, but the, they started noticing that those guys that really flaunted it and what have you, um, you know, had certain conditions growing up in their in the family, and that came to an abrupt halt. <laughs> in the 70s with what happened in America during Stonewall and, and that's a whole other video that I'm going to make later on. Um, but yeah, I think that we need to sort of open up our minds as far as understanding how permanently immense the design of nature is and how our two genders are just you know, are the letters that come with the alphabet. There's nothing, there's nothing to have opinions over. And in that we are that, that we are that, um, the, uh, the experience of switching the wires around causes a whole bunch of things. Um, and it, they're not necessarily s sensible or easy to understand or, 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 uh, um, you know, we, we find logical reasons to reject it or judge it or, or accept it. Um, but really, it never ceases to be in an environment of instability and there's just nothing there ready for it. And there never will be anything ready there for it because uh, all of creation, all of life form, all life forms, even plants, move in this um, way of, of so when something is so uh, universally, entirely, only that way, practically, um, no matter what you do or how you formulate it, there's always going to be something that doesn't flow. It runs into, so it starts becoming unstable. So that's the only thing I wanted to talk about right now. <laughs> Leave it at that. Okay, bye-bye.